Mauta, Khalid radiallahu broke nine swords. Why? Because they were the swords of Khalid. As for Khalid himself, he was Allah's sword. So he could never be broken. And the man who brought the two superpowers of the day to their knees, passed away upon his bed. But the truth is, that why shouldn't he desire martyrdom? For didn't the Prophet wasallam say about a martyr that he is not given ghusl because his blood will bear witness for his shahada on the day of judgment. I swear by Allah, if Khalid was better than a million at that time, he is better than a billion of today. But the truth is that there will never be another Khalid. <laughs> The other example is the example of Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu an. The man who fought against the Prophet وسلم, and the companions. The man who was responsible for the wounding of the Prophet وسلم, The only man who defeated the Muslims while the Prophet وسلم, was among them. The only man, Khalid ibn Walid. But this is not what we know him as. We know him as this is what the Prophet وسلم, gave him the special title called Sayfullah. Because the same Saif that he used in dunya, in Jahiliyyah, he used it in Islam like no one else used it then or after. A man who after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, and Abu Bakr radiallahu an passed away, and Umar ibn Khattab was the Khalifa, he asked Khalid, Khalid, I need you to go to the Persian people, all the Roman people. I'm not sure exactly the battle. How many soldiers you need? Khalid said, give me 500. Amr al-Khattab reminded him, Ya Khalid, those people, they have themselves maybe 100,000 troops. Khalid said, okay, then give me 500 more. Umar told him to take 10,000 troops with him. Khalid did not want 10,000 troops. He said, those kuffar, Allah have only given them a piece of the dunya, but Allah gave to us the promise of Akhirah. And Wallahi, if I went there with the, only 10 believers, will come back with their power, will come back with victory. This is how he felt. Because those companions of the Prophet wasalam, they only cared about the dunya, and they only thought about the dunya, like the water when it hits the ground in the middle of the sky when the, in the summertime. How long it lasts? Like that. Like that. Because their hearts was not attached to dunya and they was only thinking, considering akhirah, Allah gave them izzah. Allah gave them power. And that power was felt before they even met the kuffar. And those handful of troops compared to those number of troops which the kuffar had was enough for Khalid. He came back with the victory, mashallah. These are our heroes. And for our young people that are in the streets, we don't like you to be in the streets. We don't like who you are with in the streets. We don't like what you are doing in the streets. We don't like what it does to the image of Islam, but we love you. 
We love you. You are the sons of Islam and the daughters of Islam and the future of Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, among you, there is a Abu Dhar and there is a Khalid ibn Walid. For the last four years of the life of Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu anhu, he was demoted. He couldn't go into the battlefield. This was the biggest test for Khalid ibn Walid. After Hira, for six months, he was stopped from going into the battlefield. And Khalid dubbed that year, the year of the women. The year of the women, because he couldn't go and fight. And for the last four years of his life, he couldn't go and fight. And the narration mentioned, but Khalid didn't waste his time. He will recite the Quran, man like Khalid bin Walid. After Fajr, he will recite the Quran until Dhuhr. He would say, that jihad has stopped me from learning the Quran. Now he made up for it. From Fajr until Dhuhr, he will recite the Quran and he will cry out to the fear of Allah. Continuously cry out to the fear of Allah. And after four years, when Khalid was close to his death, SubhanAllah, can you imagine a man who fought numerous battles, brought down the superpowers, is dying upon his bed. And the Sahabi came to him and he said, Oh Khalid, and he said, you know when Omar demoted me, I felt bad in my heart. But now I realized that what Omar done was right. Because Omar only wanted the khayr for the believers. And I have nothing in my heart for Umar ibn Khattab anhu. And he was close to his death. And the narration mentioned when people would walk in, he would show him his arms. That there was not a hand span on his arm which did not have a wound upon it. They would show him the right arm. He would show him the left arm. He would show him the chest. He would show him the legs. He said, look at me. I fought over a hundred duels, numerous battles, and I'm dying on my bed. Khalid is dying on his bed. Somebody said to Khalid, they said, Oh Khalid, don't you understand? The day the Prophet dubbed you the sword of Allah, it was impossible for you to die on the battlefield. For if you died on the battlefield, that would have meant that the sword of Allah was broken by an infidel. And the sword of Allah could never be broken. And Khalid radiallahu anhu, contrary to his desires, died upon his bed. But see, on the battle of Mauta, Khalid radiallahu anhu broke nine swords. Why? Because they were the swords of Khalid. As for Khalid himself, he was Allah's sword. So he could never be broken. And the man who brought the two superpowers of the day to their knees, passed away upon his bed. But the truth is, that why shouldn't he desire martyrdom? For didn't the Prophet wasallam say about a martyr, that he is not given ghusl, because his blood will bear witness for shahada on the day of judgment. His clothes are not changed, because his clothes will bear witness for him on the day of judgment. A janaza, according to many fuqaha, is not prayed upon the shaheed. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات Those who have passed away in the path of Allah, don't say they are dead, بل أحيا They are alive by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The truth is that Khalid's clothes may not bear testimony to his shahada. His blood may not bear testimony to his shahada. I swear by Allah, every single shaheed of this ummah will bear testimony for Khalid bin Walid. Because there has never been a shaheed in this ummah who has not been inspired by Khalid bin Walid radiallahu Never been a shaheed in this ummah who has not been inspired by Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. And the narration mentioned that he left behind a horse and he left behind a sword and he sent it to Umar ibn Khattab. And when Umar saw it, he began to cry. And he said, Abu Bakr judged men. Abu Bakr knew men far better than I did. He realized the virtue of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. But can you imagine that horse that Khalid left behind? Could any other man ride the horse that Khalid rode? No, because he would never be able to fulfill its right. Can any other man hold the sword that Khalid held? No, because no other man would be able to fulfill its right. Because Khalid was on a different level. 
And the narration mentioned that when Khalid radiallahu passed away, the women of Bani Makhzum came out and cried. And Umar had a strict rule that women could not come out and cry. Even when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away and the women gathered in the house of Aisha radiallahu anhu and they were crying and Umar, Umar dispersed them. So when it came to Khalid bin Muli, the man came to Umar and they said, Oh Umar, the women of Bani Makhzum are crying over Khalid bin Muli. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, May your mother lose you. For the likes of Khalid, those who cry should cry. For the likes of Khalid, those who cry should cry. And then Umar radiallahu anhu heard the mother of Khalid reciting the poetry. He said, Anta khayru min alfi alfin. You are better than a million when men fall on their faces in front of you. That you are more braver than a lion and a tiger and Sahar ibn Abi Ishbali. That you are more generous than that flood that comes from down from the mountain. And Umar heard her reciting this. And he said, the mother of Khalid bin Walid has spoken the truth. I swear by Allah. If Khalid was better than a million at that time, he is better than a billion of today. But the truth is that there will never be another Khalid bin Walid. By Allah, if you look at Khalid, he was, he was Frederick the Great, Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Taymor, all of them in one. He was more, all of them and more in one. And there will never be another Khalid bin Walid. As Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, and he bore testimony to Khalid bin Walid. He said, Ajizat al Nisa and Yalibna Misla Khalid. Women will never give birth to the likes of Khalid bin Walid again. May Allah elevate the status of Khalid bin Walid on our behalf. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us with the likes of Khalid bin Walid and the other Sahaba radiallahu anhu on the day of judgment.